Welcome to Mike Check with Mike Shaw. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance. A show about news, politics, and other stuff. Watch me for the changes and try to keep up, okay? And now, here's your host. I make this look good. Mike, 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 Mike. Mike Shaw. Let's kick the tires and light the fires, big daddy. It is Friday Eve, and uh, this is the Friday Eve before the Friday Eve before Christmas. Oh man, could look at it that way. That's a mouthful. Is that right, or is is my math correct? That's right. I don't know, man. Christmas is after next weekend, right? I don't know. I don't know what day it is. I don't know. They'll run together. It's sneaking up on us. It's in a hurry. It, it's all going to be here too fast, and then it'll be over, and then there'll be nothing till Easter. It's all right. We got Valentine's Day, man. Come on. Define we, Ray. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm single too. It's all good. It's a joke. So um, I don't know about you, but I was up. So last night I started probably about six thirty. And off and on till 11 last night watching Geminid meteor showers stuff. No, I, I wasn't up. Dozens. I saw dozens of them. And then this morning up at 4, I haven't slept since 4, and watching dozens more Geminid meteor showers. If all those wishes come true, oh, my, my life's going to change. Dang, That's man. all I can say. <laughs> Not that we believe in that stuff. I don't know. Hey, joining me in studio is our... Uh, He's he's our sports czar, but for this first segment, he's our co-anchor of the news, Chris Collins. How are you, man? Good afternoon. Happy Friday Eve. Thank you. Happy Friday Eve. It's to good you to as be well. back. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. All right. It is. We're doing great, man. End of the year giving uh, for nonprofits and uh, ministries is in full swing. So if anybody's got uh, spare change, send me an email. See yeah. Collins at fca dot org. We say all the time that the the gospel is free, but money costs ministry costs money. That's right. So, <laughs> Correct. It costs money to get it out there. That's right. All right, joining us on the phone. This is fun. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard. Yeah, I know you guys heard. It's Internet Freedom Day! We should have got cake. I mean, there's lots of candy all over the station. That'll have to suffice. We don't need any cake. You, you know, got that man. shirt made pretty quick, though. That's pretty cool. You got Thank that you. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, right. Internet Freedom Day. Well, we saw it coming. And so joining us from our friends at rstreet, rstreet.org, free markets, real solutions, Welcome to the show, Joe Kane. How are you, Joe? Good. How's it going, Mike? Excellent, man. Are you ready to spike the football with us? Because Internet Freedom Day. Yeah, it's a great day. It really is. <laughs> now, have you been on the Internet in the last few years? Because, you know, depending on who you are, I mean, most of the tech world is like gloom and doom. And, you know, they have the um, net neutrality day where they black out websites and like, this is what this website will look like if Ajit Pai has his way. Yeah. I mean, how wrong are they? Uh, they're pretty wrong. I mean, I had to run back to my office after the meeting today just to make sure the Internet still works. And, uh, <laughs> right. It does. It does, at least for the moment. So I think we should be good there. But, yeah, this this definitely is, is not a threat to your favorite websites in any way. It's just a... a we're returning to the light touch regulatory framework that allowed to, the internet to thrive and grow into what it has become today, what we all know and love. And there's really no need to impose on it, you know, 1934 telephone regulations. Uh, what what I like to say, them. before I let Chris get in here, I just like to say, nobody panic! Right, yeah. yeah. Keep your Lots composure. There, Everybody keep your composure. Well, you said a few things in there uh, that just for the average listener, I spend a ton of time uh, online. A lot of people um, that, that work from home offices or remotely now, which is more the trend for, for young professionals. Um, how does the decision today roll back or affect? I mean, you, you said a couple words in there that maybe for just the average Internet user, they don't quite get. So could you could you dumb it down even further uh, in terms sure. of what what today's rollback? might mean right so i guess we have to go back to the, the start of the commercial internet uh in the 90s and it, there was a, a just an agreement among a bipartisan consensus really that the internet is sort of different we don't want to impose on it same regulations that we did on telephones you know we want to have this unregulated environment and that worked really well that's what allowed all the edge companies like you know your googles and netflixes stuff that we all like to use uh that allowed them to grow into what they became today but then in 2015 uh, we had a radical departure from that, switching uh, to this Title II regulation, and that refers to uh, Title II of the 1934 Communications Act, which is what was designed to regulate uh, the Bell telephone monopoly. And so imposing those sorts of you know, public utility regulations 
have really heavy handed regulations on the internet uh, is what we decided to do in 2015. Uh, luckily today what the commission did is roll those back and say we're going to go back to the thing that was working and gave us all the great stuff that we like today. Yay, great stuff. That's why I'm calling it Internet Freedom Day. The freedom, the Internet has once again been set free. Um, so uh, you're only talking two years ago. So the Internet was great before that. So I don't know why people are now saying, oh, no, the Internet's going to be broken. Now, you know, the fear is... You know, the, the good part of net neutrality, I guess, and it's always the, the name is always much better than what it really is. But yeah, what a lot of people I know were concerned about beforehand and and feel rest assured in is that all Internet traffic was going to be created equal. Comcast wasn't going to charge YouTube extra money to reach their customers. And that was going to keep Com- Comcast bills down and, the, you know, those types of things. And people are afraid that. The, that Comcast and other internet providers are going to start acting like monopoly, monopolies now and charging us more for worse service. Uh, why is the opposite true? Right. So what the FCC is doing today, when it's stepping aside, it doesn't mean that there's no regulation left. What it means is that instead of the FCC using these outdated rules, instead the uh, authority is going to be shifted over to the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. you got to get your F's and C's sorted out in this space. We love acronyms. That's right. Uh, so the Federal Trade Commission is the uh, agency that has authority over pretty much every company in the country, and they can enforce, bring enforcement actions against any company that engages in uh, unfair or deceptive practices or unfair methods of competition. And so, you know, if you have these scary scenarios that we hear about, yeah, like Comcast is going to block Netflix or something like that so they can prioritize their own service. That's the sort of thing that the FTC would say, no, you can't do that. And they're going to levy, you know, big fines and, and, and force people to, to not engage in that kind of behavior. I like that that's like the, the scare tactic, Netflix. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's like, don't take away right, my yeah. Netflix. come on, man. I can't binge watch? Oh, no. man, yeah. I have to actually interact with people. So I've got a, a two-part question, <laughs> double barrel question, as they call it in the uh, in the industry here. Uh, the first of which is, is, is Al Gore... Uh, is this now the Internet he envisioned uh, when he created oh, this gosh. years and years ago? Uh, and then the follow-up question to that is, does this change the bottom line uh, for service providing for uh, the average consumer? So if I've got Comcast, does this change anything on the bottom line for what I'm going to be paying for my Internet service? Uh, I think we will we will never be able to fully pay our debt to Al Gore for uh, <laughs> his right. creation of this of this wonderful, no, he's, wonderful network. He's been paid plenty. He's on the Mount Rushmore <laughs> of uh, internet yeah, he's creators. He's fine. That's right. Uh, yeah, but in terms of of your average day, uh, your average internet user, I think in in reality, in the short term, not much is going to change. Uh, these these uh, bright line rules that people talk about about no blocking, no throttling. These are the sorts of things that. Uh, your ISP wasn't doing yesterday. They weren't doing it before the rules. They weren't doing it after the rules. So they're really not uh, things that anyone was engaged in. So it's not going to be a change there. What we're going to be looking at, though, is that there's sort of innovative business models that could arise in the future uh, and that we don't want to keep the Internet today as the final Internet. Maybe Al Gore's Internet that we have today isn't, isn't how we want it to stay forever. We, you know, we can have new innovations. Where we have things like virtual reality on the horizon. Or maybe you want to have on, online video games that need a little, like prioritizing their service a little bit more. You know, if, you're, if your game lags by half a second, that's, that's pretty bad. But if right. your email is a half a second late, that's not, uh, that's not as catastrophic. Right. And so you know, we don't want to necessarily say, oh, all traffic has to be treated the same forever because, you know, the internet of the future might be different. Yeah, because if I'm on a Minecraft server and I'm fighting a zombie and I get lag, I'm going to die. I don't want to die. Right. That's right. Um, and so, so yeah, kind of going back to, quote, unquote, net neutrality, which which meant that all traffic was the same, this now opens the door for, no, your traffic's not the same. You're a gamer, so you're willing to pay a little more to get the fast pipe, and we'll do that for you, that kind of thing. So, um, that's a beautiful thing. I, I have this is a pressing question for me, and uh, you know I don't know what the answer is. And, and Ray and I were talking about this earlier. He found an old article about how municipalities, you know, have these old ancient deals with cable companies, and they're unwilling to give them up because you know they make good money off of these special deals with Cox Cable, 
Comcast Cable, I don't know, you name it, Sudden Link, uh, who else is out there? And, I mean, they, when they first put in the, the pipes and, and signed these deals, there were 99-year deals from 1980. And I think the web's going to be a little different in 2079. So how in the world do we bust up these monopolies and uh, really uh, have some fun with the free market? Yeah, you're right. The, the one thing we really need here is competition. And I think that, that's going to solve a lot of the problems, a lot of the worries people have. Uh, and I think the way that we do that is that we need people just building more broadband infrastructure. And I think that's where these rules were especially harmful is that they, because of the burdens that they imposed on ISPs, that meant that they, had, they didn't invest as much. And so that's going to reduce the amount of competition that we have. But if we can, you know, we're, we're getting rid of these regulations, do other things to promote broadband deployment, then you're going to see competition that comes for that cable company from maybe wireless services. You know, we, we're going to see the rollout of, next, of 5G. You know, we're now at 4G uh, for your cell phone. 5G is coming in the next year or so. Yes. And that that could then make wireless a competitor to your, your traditional wireline broadband. And so, you know, competition should come in from every which way. You know, we want all the competition we can get. Uh, and we just need to make sure that we have a regulatory environment that is going to facilitate the investment that we need to create that competition. Take that cable and... I was in error. Usually when I ask that question, I preface it with, I hate Comcast. I hate them with a passion. But anyway, I got it in. Uh, Joe Kane, our, our street, he's the technology policy associate. Man, good talk, man. And it's a great day. Um, have a piece of cake over there at our street, uh, for us on Internet Freedom Day. Will do, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. All right. 